Let us pray together. Let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So it is Thanksgiving week, and everyone's already getting very excited, I'm sure, for the big meals, right? Meals and football. At least the football part, right? So I want to start off with a story about Thanksgiving. Barbara Tyler um, shares this short story called Thanksgiving Without Martha. Martha Stewart will not be dining with us this Thanksgiving. I'm telling you in advance, so don't act surprised. Since Miss Stewart won't be coming, I've made a few small changes. Our sidewalk will not be lined with homemade paper bag luminaries. After a trial run, it was decided that no matter how cleverly done, rows of flaming lunch sacks do not have the desired welcoming effect. Once inside, our guests will note that the entry hall is not decorated with the swags of Indian corn and fall foliage I had planned to make. Instead, I've gotten the kids involved in the decorating by having them track in colorful autumn leaves from the front yard. The mud was their idea. The dining table will not be covered with expensive linens or fancy china or crystal goblets. If possible, we will use dishes that match and everyone will get a fork. Since this is Thanksgiving, we will refrain from using the plastic Peter Rabbit plate and the Santa napkins from last Christmas. Our centerpiece will not be the tower of fresh fruit and flowers that I promised. Instead, we will be displaying a hedgehog-like creation handcrafted from the finest construction paper. The artist assures me it is a turkey. We will be dining fashionably late. The children will entertain you while you wait. I'm sure they will be happy to share every choice comment I have made regarding Thanksgiving, pilgrims, and the turkey hotline. Please remember the most of these comments were made at 5 a.m upon discovering that the turkey was still hard enough to cut diamonds. As accompanied to the children's recital, I will play a recording of tribal drumming. If the children should mention that I don't own a recording of tribal drumming or that tribal drumming sounds suspiciously like a frozen turkey in a clothes dryer, <laughs> ignore them. They are lying. We toyed with the idea of ringing a dainty silver bell to announce the start of our feast. In the end, we chose to keep our traditional method. We've also decided against a formal seating arrangement. When the smoke alarm sounds, please gather around the table and sit where you like. In the spirit of harmony, we will ask the children to sit at a separate table in a separate room next door. Now I know you have all seen pictures of one person carving a turkey in front of a crowd of appreciative onlookers. This will not be happening at our dinner. For safety reasons, the turkey will be carved in a private ceremony. And I stress private, meaning do not, under any circumstances, enter the kitchen to laugh at me. Do not send small, unsuspecting children to check on my progress. I have an electric knife. The turkey is unarmed. It stands to reason that I will eventually win, and when I do, we will eat. And I would like to take this opportunity to remind my young diners that passing the rolls is not a football play nor is it a request to bean your sister in the head with warm, tasty bread. Oh, and one reminder for the adults. For the duration of the meal, and especially while in the presence of, of you diners, we will refer to the giblet gravy as its lesser-known name, cheese sauce. If a young diner questions you regarding the origins or type of cheese sauce, plead ignorance, because cheese sauce stains. Before I forget, there is one last change. Instead of offering a choice between 12 different scrumptious desserts, we will be serving the traditional pumpkin pie garnished with whipped cream and small fingerprints. You will have a choice. Take it or leave it. Martha Stewart will not be dining with us this Thanksgiving, and she probably won't come next year either. I am thankful. How often do we do this to ourselves? We try to be who we aren't in an effort to impress others. Barbara, in this story that's meant to be amusing, comes to this wonderful conclusion. She's glad that she can be herself. And she's okay with that. She knows that she can't control our perception of her, 
So we can choose to take part or we can leave. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could all get to the point where we are secure, secure enough in who we are, secure enough in our faith, secure enough in our ministry that we can be okay with who we are. Our epistle passage this week actually helps us in this. We heard in Hebrews, after the promise that Christ is the high priest who brings us forgiveness and restoration with God, after we heard the promise that God will remember our sins and lawless deeds no more, we hear, let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds. How to provoke one another to love and good deeds. Not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching. We are to build one another up in Christ. We are to build one another up in community. We are to help us become secure people of faith, filled with hope that God's love always wins. But how do we do this? How do we provoke one another to love and good deeds? I mean, it's really easy to provoke one another, right? It'd be really easy to do that this coming Thursday, wouldn't it? When you're sitting around with your family, I'm sure there's some discussion topics you're thinking, maybe we shouldn't bring that up, right? We know how to provoke and to prod one another. It is easy to provoke one another to hate and fear. And we see and we hear that every day, but how can we do the opposite? How can we build one another up? We can recognize the divine in one another. That we are all made in the image of God and all are children of the Creator. And as such, regardless of what you look like or where you are in the socioeconomic status, regardless of your history or what burdens you bring with you, the fact that we are all children of the Creator, we all deserve respect love, and forgiveness. We as a, as a congregation strive to perfect our faith through demonstrating Christ's grace. And we build one another up in ministry and mission through Sunday school, weekly worship, youth devotionals, Esther circle. We build one another up. And then through fish dinners, through opening our building to the community, Alzheimer's support group, faith in action, dinners and events, Relay for Life, fundraisers, weddings, funerals, and more, we help build up one another and our community. And then through being a drop-off site for church world service and creating and collecting hundreds of school kits, hygiene kits, and disaster relief buckets, through food for home and serving thousands of meals to children who live in food insecure homes in our community right here in Maslin, through Mat 1128 ministry and giving beds and linens to people coming out of homelessness, leaving domestic violence and veterans in need in Western Stark County, through mission trips to Haiti, and helping a group who serves their community in abundance out of the scarcity that they have. Through the Christmas celebration and celebrating the joy of Christ's entry into the world with 75 children and their families from our community. Through Camp Christian and helping sponsor our children and others in the region to go for a week and participate in faith formation with their peers. In these and in so many other ways, we build up one another. We build up our community, and we provoke each other toward love and good deeds. But here's the best part. We are called to serve and act on this love of Christ, this love granted through our high priest, this love that we heard as promised in Hebrews, not just here, but every day. 
And I know that many of us do, and it would be easy for me to start naming so many people who serve God out in the community daily. But I heard about one, one person here who is serving in a way that I thought was really cool and really interesting, and I want us to take a moment and recognize how one of us has moved God's love from this place, from his life, into the world. So our brother Bob Hale, if you want to stand up, Bob. You can even come up here for a minute if you'd like. That's up to you. You want to come on up? We all know Bob, right? Bob serves here. Actually, this last Thursday you were here serving, weren't you? What were you doing on Thursday? Do you remember? You were packing bags of food for the kids at the middle school, right? With food for home. But he doesn't just serve here. He also serves with his Sunday school class from First Christian in Canton. And this past summer, they went on a mission trip to the Riverwood community in Tennessee to serve there. Did you have fun? Oh, yes. Yes. They had a good time serving. And so I want us to celebrate Bob in the way that he serves and to let him and his service provoke us to love and good deeds. And so actually your pastor from over there sent us the video. So we're gonna get to we're gonna get to watch the video of your um, of your service trip. Is that cool? Yeah, awesome. So we're gonna watch that now. Thank you so much, Bob. So I want to thank you again, Bob, for not just the service that that you did there, but the fact that you are an example to us to move us towards love and good deeds. As your whole Sunday school class there was an example to us to move us toward love and good deeds. So thank you that. There is a saying about the gospel, and it is that the gospel is here to comfort the afflicted and to afflict the comfortable. And what it means by this is that Jesus comforts the sick, and he does so by going and being with them. When he hears that Lazarus is sick and is dying, he stops immediately what he is doing and he goes to be there and be present. He sits and he eats with the sinners and the tax collectors. He comforts the afflicted. But for those of us who are already comfortable, he gives us a challenge. And his challenge is that he needs us to do the same as what he has done. That he needs us to be moved to love and good deeds so that we can serve those who are afflicted in this world. That's not always comfortable. And so we need examples. We need opportunities to serve and examples that show us that we should be proud in who we are so that we can move towards love and good deeds. We're going to get more opportunities. Not only do we have the Christmas celebration and food for home and all of that, but even this past week, the board has said we're going to do two more job sites for Impact Maslin this next summer. So we have even more opportunities for us to be able to serve and to follow Jesus' pattern. So let us leave, when we leave today and when we go out and celebrate Thanksgiving with our families, with our friends, and we hear people being moved towards fear and to hate, let us stop and pause and instead try to live into these words from Hebrews where we can provoke one another to love and good deeds. May we get to that point where Barbara is, where we are secure enough in our faiths and in who we are that we are people of Christ, that we can just love and be and forgive and accept. Amen.